come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday. We're unstoppable, like a punch to the gut that knocks your intestines out your spine. Right, and then you can strangle somebody with them. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) If you choose. (laughs) If you so choose. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... You! You! Hey, thanks for choosing Thank tonight's you. movie. This is the third in a series of movies that were suggested by you and Points voted on two. by you. That's right. This is yeah. yeah, we're doing this all backwards. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. the second most voted movie. <laughs> yeah, we're working yes. our way up the ladder. Yes. yes. So the first one was Witchery. Yes. Mm, that was Witchery. Something. something I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. The second was Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Excellent Good choice. choice. And tonight we watched Ricky O, the story of Ricky. There you go. That's it? Okay. From the year. 1991, is that what it is? And directed by... Lemni Choi. There you go. Lemni Choi. Uh, I admit to being completely unfamiliar with the works of Lemni Choi. Same. Same. Okay. (laughs) Well, because this is suggested by the listeners that we didn't really get a chance to do like a whole lot of research on it, we wanted to kind of go in fresh. None of Mm -hmm. us had seen this one before. No, No, I never never even heard of this. Okay. Um, I had maybe heard of it vaguely, but no, no You told idea. us last week a movie with those blank stares all around the table. Yeah, we were movies. pretty much just yeah. like, what? Yeah. So this one has fallen through the cracks. It, it was For us, at least, yes. Made It's popular. on the Criterion channel. Yes. Uh, so this uh, 1991 was, because I want to say like The Killer was 1991, right? So this Ooh, is yeah. the John Woo explosion era. This is when Hong Kong movies kind of became prevalent in American culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were looking for everything that Hong Kong was doing after, you know, that kind of wave of Hong Kong uh, martial arts and cop movies. 89 was the killer. 89, okay. Maybe, so it's, it's yeah. riding that wave yeah. where, yes. you know, I think this was also a time, if uh, maybe it was a, t- a decade later when, um, you know, like Japanese horror cinema started. You know, there was a time that it felt like with video, American audiences specifically, I mean, it's globally, but, you know, sure. UK and all that, the Western world became aware of uh, a lot of um, Asian movies. Right. Mm-hmm. It became a lot easier to get those, you know, over to us at yeah. that point. Yeah. Because that became, you know, like I remember like the Fantasia Film Festival in mm-hmm. uh, Canada, uh, they would talk about how like, uh, you know, I remember seeing, and the thing had been going on for several years at that point, and there was an article I remember reading where they're like, yeah, there's people go and watch these movies and they're subtitled and they don't get a release like anywhere else, but they're, they're like they sell out crowds, you know, at these film festivals to watch something that's not Hollywood movies, right? Yes. You're trying to get an experience that you can't get here. This one delivers that. <laughs> Boy, did we. <laughs> you definitely will not get this <clears throat> in America. Yeah. Um, well, uh, there's... It feels like there is like remnants of like these ones had to come first in yes. order to oh, kind of yeah. get like the kill bills or whatever. Sure. Um, I thought like a lot watching this was Shogun Assassin. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's always my go back mm-hmm. to based on, you know, what we've watched down here and Baby Cart and Peril and all mm-hmm. those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That like uh, hyper violent, super stylized. Arterial sprays galore. Yes. yes. This movie is super gory. I mean, I don't know the last time <laughs> this, I saw a movie this gory. It, I was going to say, this might be one of the most gory movies I've ever seen. Like, it's, I feel like it's in the top 10, probably. Man, yeah. It's, woo. Well, just it, maybe it just stands out more because the gore is uniquely used, I would say. Like, I would agree. It yeah. gets creative with it, but Indeed, yeah, yes. wow. It was so much more than I just expected. So red. Like, I thought, <laughs> well, I thought we'd get like one or two moments like this, not 12. Yeah. You know, and, like, and, and, it's well, a yeah. lot. And just considering I had, I had no idea what right. this movie was going to be. But I mean, it, well, it's a martial arts movie. Right. Yeah. But I've seen plenty of martial arts movies where people don't explode. Yeah. No, there's a lot of martial arts movies where it's like just bones breaking and not necessarily bloody and shit. You know, it's, yeah, yeah this is 
<laughs> this is some next level shit. This is a movie where a man commits Harry Carey, pulls out his intestines, and then strangles his enemy with it. It's yeah. awesome. This as, is a movie where <laughs> a guy punches another guy in the face and his head explodes. Yep. Uh, a movie where somebody slices somebody in the face and their uh, the bottom jaw falls off. Yep. Uh, yes. Or you punch him uppercut and, and the, through the bottom of the chin, yes. in through their mouth, <laughs> and they're alive. <laughs> Uh, it's glorious. <laughs> well, uh, so the uh, movie is based on a Japanese manga, mm. and then it was made into a Japanese anime. I was going to say, course. is this One Punch Man? No. No, that's different. That okay. is actually okay. something else. Well, yeah. But I have heard yeah. of One Punch One Man. One Punch Man is like, it's kind of almost like satirical anime, right? Where, but the thing is, like, he's depressed because everyone he punches, he, like, kills immediately. Oh, so yeah, I've heard like, of this. There, no what? one can match up to me because I could just immediately kill everyone. Yeah. So that's ever, does what he I ever find his this. worthy opponent? I haven't watched enough to get that Damn. far. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so depressed. I have, really I have, I have no fan. equal. Yeah. But the irony is that this is not a Japanese movie. This is a Hong Kong movie. Yeah. Right. Um, the uh, It became popular in pop culture here because I think The Daily Show used a clip of <laughs> Ricky punching somebody and their head exploding. Yeah, that and makes it sense. it became like a, a thing. So people were aware of it. I remember them showing it to Quentin Tarantino, I think, when he was on there. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a story of Ricky. Of course he'd of seen course it. Of course he'd know, yeah. yep. Um, I read, so I'm not sure. We'd have to actually, like, fact check this. So I'm throwing it out there without fact checking. Oh, okay. Right? That the look of Ricky... The hero of this movie inspired the character of Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat. This movie inspired fatalities in Mortal Kombat. And the bad guy, the one-eyed warden, inspired M. Bison from Street Fighter, the video game. You could say yes to all of those. Yeah. And, but think, and not have anyone argue with you unless they were super knowledgeable about the history. It's of on Wikipedia. Is it? Okay. So, therefore... Which can be written by <laughs> does this I movie, or you. But does this movie predate all those things? I think Mortal Kombat was 1993. It was early. Yeah, it was early okay. 90s. I'm not positive. That's where I'm not yeah. entirely sure. If it, I mean, I'm sure it comes from that culture and just, you know, uh, again, the the movies, the mangas, the... Uh, I'm sure it's, uh, that had to have influenced it because it seems too... It seems too familiar. It seems too of the same thing because yeah. we get a lot of those kind of moments in this. Um, and it's but it's not too hard to have like, you know, uh, Asian guy ripped with black pants. Like, you, yeah. you know, that, that it's not too far of a leap to be like, oh, yeah, it looks like that. Well, it looks it also like, looks like a Lee. bunch of other guys. Yeah, it looks like Bruce Lee. Like, it looks like, you know. A bunch of other people. Yeah, he also does the thing of tasting his own blood before he has <laughs> like his, six like, times. Yeah, like oh, yeah. we thought it was a one-off and made a joke, the dodgeball joke, and, it, <laughs> yeah. and then it was like, oh no, that really That's is his, yeah, his power up. Bloop, 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 bloop. Yep, <laughs> every time he did it. Yep. That's his power up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, much like Bruce Lee, he should have glowed more. There was glowing in this. <laughs> he does. So like, That's right. But it was only like when he was meditating. There was like he got one glow when he was meditating and one when he at the, at the yeah. very end of the movie. But his fish should have been glowing, you know. Yeah, at like, some point, just to, yeah. you know. That would have been cool when he was punching through those tombstones of his fist. <laughs> right. If he got to that point, he was like, ah, you are activated. Yeah. That's, that might be glow. my favorite like training montage I've ever seen. <laughs> this old, I'm, gonna, my, I'm your old uncle, and I'm going to huck tombstones at your head in this creepy, swampy graveyard right. and just if, punch them in the air. Right. If they were all blank. It had been better if you're like, these are the tombstones of your ancestors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you must he, surpass them. He did show up and proclaim that he was his uncle, friendly ghost, or something like that. It was his name. Yeah. You know that one we all have. The yeah. friendly ghost yeah. uncle that hangs. Beware the friendly ghost uncle. But that that uh, scene with the the training montage. He like at some point like Ricky is so strong that his arms break through a uh, tombstone, mm-hmm. right? And they're just sticking and he, out he of just it. Looks like an action figure that you set up to be. It's like, like his oh. hands are in the stocks. Yeah, that's what it looks <laughs> yeah. like. It's yeah. great. It, um, I guess like a fighting game, right? It does seem like there's going to be, uh, bosses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Different levels, different areas. Right. But this is also like 
martial arts movies do this too. So yeah. I mean, like the fighting games are just kind of borrowing the structure of martial arts movies. Yeah, um, they this just one, kind of upgrade their bad guys as you know go along. Usually, it's just different people, and then uh, you know you can make characters more unique in their in their styles and the weapons they use and the looks that they have. So you know it changes and, and gets mm -hmm. broader or, or more unique as different films go on. Yeah, but eventually this one has like a guy who you know super inflates into like a, a, a <laughs> yeah, big monster that part thing. Really, and they got like a, a needle thrower, <laughs> right. and then they got um, a, what did Hell have any special? Floating Things. and kicking. She was, yeah, she was very, uh, yeah, she was she like, fly she was like Princess Peach and in Mario yeah. Two. When she jumps, she could float a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically that. That's exactly what she does. That's exactly yeah. what it is. So, well, oh, go ahead. I don't love uh, a prison for a setting for this type of story. Why? Oh yeah, it's a prison say, movie. Not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't expect this whole movie to take place mm. literally inside a prison the whole time. Mm. Um, I prison escape movies just kind of aren't my thing, and uh, I feel like when like I would prefer like a Mortal Kombat thing where we're all going to this island for this tournament, and that's I mean, the one. Th I location, mean, this is basically you the know? island. Do you think he went there? He got caught on purpose to go do this. No, we saw the uh, the backstory. Like, cause um, he got he was in there for manslaughter. Yeah, we saw that happen. Which, that was the flash. So the which fucking one? flashbacks. I'm yeah. sorry. Asian <laughs> movies always love to. The Chinese and Japanese movies love their fucking flashbacks that sometimes don't add anything. Well, they come in out of nowhere. Uh, you know, when he's meditating or when he's thinking about something. Mm -hmm. The story that I get of Ricky. Uh, well, he's like a. I, I guess like he's a superhuman person basically right. uh he was around what seven to ten years old he started displaying super strength uh his <laughs> uncle says and then um he became a flutist yeah. and uh as a as a young man and then he fell in love with a girl yeah, and uh, they, they went uh, not kite flying but uh remote control rc helicopters yeah that was fun <laughs> better than kite flying um and there's a whole lot of cute, uh, you know, uh, interaction between the two of them. But yep, then she witnesses a heroin deal. She sees everybody on the streets is just right. shooting heroin. They're shooting junk right into their veins. Yep. And the heroin dealer sees this happen. And so he they grab her and they take her back to the boss. And they're like, she saw us doing the deal. What do we do? Have fun. She's yours. And then she escapes, and I was like, because I was still at this point, like, is this his sister or his girlfriend? Right. I guess we don't really know. Still unclear. I think I think it's his girlfriend and really felt like a sister at one point. Because I thought maybe in that him. scene she was going to have, like, super strength and be able to fight the uh, uh, heroin dealers and get away. Right. No, she just immediately jumps off a building. That was yeah. dramatic. That was oh, my God. Yeah, she makes no other attempt. Just, <laughs> no, uh, I no, guess it's all over she for me. She doesn't stop to look around yeah. and see if there's an exit. She's like, I'm no. going off the building. Yep. And whoo, that, that, <laughs> there's a lot. The there's some really great dummy work in this. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, great yeah. stuff. Because they don't cut away from anything. They're just like, boop, no, I, on the, the ground. The dummy flop is pretty That's great. Pretty the, great. The little bounce they do, like when their momentum catches <laughs> up, it's pretty great. Yeah, I imagine yeah. a human. Well, I, well, I imagine a human would just like and splat. Yeah, did, this one bounces a little bit. Do you guys ever think like, did you ever grow up thinking that this would be a common problem in your life where you would like witness a drug deal? Like I or witness oh, something no. you shouldn't have. I've been and lucky like, enough not to not to to have grown up how I have. And not no, but around. I'm just saying, like in movies, it's like you turn the turn corner, corner and there's like, it's drugs. happening, and then it's like now your whole life is ruined, and you have to go into witness protection or something. You know, like <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like like all the crow too. Yeah, sure, right like the, yeah. like yeah. Worse, yeah. Best case scenario, you <laughs> don't get murdered and right, you go into yeah. witness protection. No, yeah. you're right. I've never had that concern. But man, movies made it seem like <laughs> dangers are on every corner. Yeah. Yeah, don't walk down the wrong street; it'll ruin your life. Yeah, During someone sees you. Yeah, was, uh, the, during the the drug wars or yep. whatever. That was, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, L.A. in the nineties. Yeah, yeah L.A. in the nineties. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we see that Ricky in this flashback tracks down the drug dealer who was responsible for his uh, girlfriend's death, and he punches him to death in the street. <laughs> Right? I don't think he took his head off. He, like, beat the... I can't remember. Did he pummel that guy? I don't know. Yeah. We saw so uh, many gory so dismemberments many in this. Right. Yeah. I can't even remember what he did to that guy. I don't yeah. think... Oh, he left, like, a punch-sized hole in oh, his yeah, head. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, he did. He indentation, yeah. a crater <laughs> little, in his head. A little divot in his head, yeah. Right. And, yeah, that's when he got shot, like, four yeah. times. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in with the, the chest. Yes. With the bullets still in his chest. Yeah. yeah. Didn't leave a mark. Because he was so pumped up with the rage that he just went in there and... So, uh... 
Let me ask you. Well, first of all, well, we know that Ricky apparently has superhero he, superhuman healing right. abilities. As also, we're, right as we're introduced earlier on in the movie, it's like prison intake, prisoner intake at the beginning of the movie. So there's a few brought in, and they got to walk through, you know, uh, metal detectors and whatnot. And so Ricky is going through the metal detector. He is he sets it off, and they have to X-ray him to see, like, what wow, he has a weapon, and it is revealed that he has four bullets still lodged in his chest. From yeah. an earlier incident, which we will which is learn. this yes. right the 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 confrontation with the heroin dealer. Yes, so that's why he goes to jail. That's why he's going to prison for manslaughter. Yes. I guess it's ruled. They killed this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ten years. So here we go. We're in a maximum security penitentiary. <laughs> a right? lenient maximum security penitentiary. Everyone gets to roam around as they please for the most part. It seems. So what's the deal in this place? What's the rules and how does it operate? Well, we're also told this is the future of 2001. Okay, right. yeah, and the future they describe is like the present we've been living in forever. In this. <laughs> They're like, uh, prisons have been privatized for profit. It's like, oh, welcome. And then didn't it say even um, even farm fields are owned by corporations or something like that? Yeah. And we were like, uh, yeah. yeah. And, Corporate uh, America has taken yeah, over every exactly sector exactly like the world everything. I live in, yeah. yeah. Only this is in America. This is uh, uh, Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Yes. I was wondering if this was like a move to like distance the government of like uh, involvement in what's actually going on. They're not blaming the government. Yeah, it's a private prison. It becomes it's a private prison. Right, right, right. Look yeah. at the government madness that no Ooh, is, oh, is yeah. this supposed to be like a cautionary tale about propaganda. privatizing From prisons? communist it's China. A, yes, yeah, it's propaganda being like, see see what will happen if we privatize prisons? It'll be so much worse, guys. Uh, right, so I'm sure the, somebody would have taken this and be like, look what happens. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. guy got his gut punched. Is punched that in yeah. the Japanese one? We don't know. We, yeah. we didn't do the research. They will farm uh, opium inside the prison right. if it's privatized. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, it all connects back. We were wondering for a while, like, uh, what is the connection between, like, at the very beginning, there's a prisoner, an older guy, yes. who's accosted by um, some other prisoners right yep. it seems like there's some kind of hierarchy in the prison there's like the regular prisoners right who dress in black right and then there's the bad guy hooligan prisoners right who dress in black yeah they're like medium bosses and then there's like the boss of each there are wing of right, the prison. there are four wings north south east and west the the prison is um roamed by the gang of four who run each wing of the prison, headed by a specific head boss. Who are they again? We have Hell, who runs, like, West Wing. We have Tarzan. Tarzan, who's the giant guy uh, who runs one of the other wings. Um, the Needle guy, who... I he was... Uh, he Was he Old Ghost? Or White Ghost? Was he white? He's he white, white God. Ghost. White God. White God. All right. White God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's got the hair. He's got the blonde hair yeah, and the blonde bangs. Have you yeah. guys seen that? I think it might be like an Asian movie. Uh, there's a dog movie called White God that is about like dogs teaming up and like a pack being led by like a white dog that attack people and like roam the streets. And it's like about from like the point 90s? of view. No, it's from like the oh, it's a 2000. It's a anime, isn't it? No, it's oh, from like shit. 2010 or something like oh, wow. that. Let me pull oh, it up. Okay. And then yeah. we have uh, Raging Sea or what? Where, yeah. Is that his name? I think it was Raging Sea. I think it's Raging Sea, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Who who runs the other wing? Who's the, the one first that boss? Ricky is in? Right. right? That, yeah. He runs the one Ricky's in, and so he's like the major boss. We we start out with. But they are all prisoners. Yes. But, but they are given them, leniency from the not the warden, but the assistant warden who is in charge. Yes. Who's the one eyed assistant warden? Okay. And so he's just one eyed snake. I think one eyed he's snake. To. Is, yes. Which unfortunate. Wow. 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 That. <laughs> We, <laughs> that right. means something right. different right. here get, in America. Get, get, think about it. Think about that. It, you've never heard that before? No, no, I, I have. Say, okay, I didn't, okay, I didn't okay, put it yeah. together. Yeah, I was like, well, snake. well, that takes all the seriousness out of this for me. Yeah, I can't. I mean, a lot of the seriousness gets taken out of it as we go yeah. along yeah. throughout this movie. This yeah. is also a man who, is, uh, who has uh, uh, one less uh, hand and it has pin pincers. Yeah, it's a <laughs> claw. Hook and pincers, yeah. It's a claw, but yeah, it like it's like tongs. He can yes. click it. like It's like two, two prongs he can click together. Yeah, and yeah. And but I like that this man always Think has like of, a decadent uh, feast everywhere he goes. This is the assistant warden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warden. yeah. He has like a full spread everywhere he goes, and he has a decadent bowl mm -hmm. just because sure. this, oh, man, this man does not eat without a centerpiece. Fish. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, a massive collection of VHS porn. So yes. much, like like hundreds of tapes. his walls. Yeah, 
And uh, he, it, when we're first introduced to him, he's having like a drink of uh, wine, water, uh, yeah. rice, wine. rice, rice it's, beer, it, yeah. something. I thought it was ice water. It's not ice <laughs> no. water. No. Well, there's Ooh. a ball in it, and I'm like, is that an eyeball? Is yeah. he? Like, and then it turns out it's his glass eye. Yeah. Ew. Uh, so gross. That he puts into. And it's got like a little demon, uh, you know, it's yeah. a red fiery eye or yellow fiery eye. Which, thing. fuck yeah, if I have to wear a fake eye, give me a weird freaky one. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. going Charles some, Dance the whole yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, <laughs> the me, whole way. give me something crazy. Some yeah, smiley faces. I yeah. want some Target. You know, oh yeah. Ball. Can I have different ones for like different moods? Yeah, you know? that's the like, uh, last yeah. action hero. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. No, oh no, at, at some point they're going to get one where you can remote control change it to whatever. Oh, yeah. just like an LED light and you can program it. It's going to be like fuck off is what it's going to say. remember those belts in the early 2000s that were like the LED signs that yeah. would scroll a message through. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like that before or, your yeah. eye. Or it's going to be like, you've seen like when we got through COVID, we had the masks that were digital yeah. when you talk. Yes, it would move yeah. And everything. You're yeah. going to get that for your eye. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. A little thing. Like Pac-Man game yeah. running on your eye. Little emojis pop point. him. Give oh, yeah. everybody the oh, yeah. middle oh, finger emojis. with my eyeball. That's exactly Fuck yeah. Oh my God. There we go. You know what? Michaela, cool. I'll put your eye out if you need me to. I just need you to sign a form. We just need to have a good story though. We got to come up with a good story. Yeah. I was in a prison for a year yeah. and the warden poked my eye out with his cane. Yeah. How's yeah. that? Is so, that for you? So I got it a middle, works for this movie. So I got a middle finger emoji eyeball replacement. <laughs> yes. So... And it works. Yeah. It's a win. Win, yeah. win. Right. What are you really losing after all? I mean, I can't ever commit another crime because I'm very <laughs> distinguishable, you know, with this fake eye situation. Right. So. Well, but, well, are you just like, she wouldn't She wouldn't open her left yeah. eye for some reason. <laughs> yeah. No, or if I saw her, officer. <laughs> well, um, early in the movie, right, so Ricky has brought in any he's processed and uh yes there's a confrontation between this old uh prisoner old ma yep and ma. uh who's you know about to get paroled who, and he, who's a, who is a woodsman who's carrying every tool he has on his person yep and he has created a little toy uh train for his son who he's never met i think because he's been he killed somebody like uh Many, rus- right. running her or his wife pregnant wife to the hospital yes and that's why he's in prison yes and so he's about to get out and these hooligans that cost him and they beat him up. And because of this, to avenge this guy's death, Ricky steps in. And I think this is like the first time we get to see like his uh, uh, super power, super power punching. He- There's something to it because it, uh, as they assault the old man and make fun of him and all that stuff, and then they're leaving, and then uh, the like the head. Um, the first bad guy gets tripped and lands on a piece of wood with nails that's just sitting in the right. cell yeah, yeah, yeah. What, for whatever reason. They're in the and, washroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the yeah, they're in the washroom. And he gets it through his hand and his eye at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Again, very violent movie. Uh very fun. Um, but and then he gets he gets taken off and he'll come back for revenge later. But that is our first introduction to that to um to Ricky at this point. I so think. The, but when when the old guy actually dies right he, right he, i can't remember they go kill him or he hung himself the yeah, old guy so, yeah hung himself. right because the the uh, warden um denied his probation mm-hmm. so yeah. he won't be getting out to see his kids so ricky goes out in the rain and, and, and loses his shit and fucking fights the rain yeah, yeah. for a scene that goes on for like what they should have cut earlier i they like pan that they out didn't. and just keep going and he's just taking swings at the rain right and screaming no yeah, fighting this guy. Yeah. yeah, and I it's was wonderful. like, so it's a it's a extreme emotional outburst from this guy who basically just goes around through most of the movie being angry. Mm-hmm. Yes. Unless we see him in the flashback where mm-hmm. he's a cherubic, very uh, much. He is so <laughs> innocent. He plays so innocent in the flashback scenes. He's mm-hmm. very smiley. He's very he's very, he's dressed in khaki and yellow. Yeah, mm-hmm. pastel colors and polos yep. and he's all like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he's also he's probably supposed to be like ten years younger and a teenager at that point. Same mm-hmm. actor. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, okay, we're laying in some kind of plot here, and maybe this guy is his dad or Yeah, somehow. you wonder why, why he's he so, so upset. Yeah. Uh, Do we know the answer to that? I don't know. No, Ricky, not clear to me. The only thing that I could figure out, right, is um, so there's established, I think, in the record that is read by the warden, you know, as he's going over. Yep. So we know that uh, Ricky went to go study uh, uh, playing the flute. Yes. And apparently. then he disappeared for two years before apparently he committed manslaughter, killed this drug dealer and ended up in prison. What do you do for the two years? I think that was when he trained. I would guess so. Yes. With uh, Uncle right. uh, Tombstones. Ghost. Yeah, the tombstone, the, the training. So this yeah. is when he harnessed his, because I think that guy says, like, I knew your father, and I knew you were showing the superpower, like, when you were younger. Let's see where it is now. Yeah, because so his name's not Lee, Lee, what's his name, Lee Wong? 
yeah. in the movie. His name is not Lee Wong. He was renamed by his ghost uncle right. to right. that. I, yeah. I forgot what his name was before that. I don't even know. So we don't even know if yeah. he can to old. Yeah, I missed I don't him. think so because I think he was at the grave. Oh, you know what? He could have been at the girl's grave. You think Maybe so? I'm out of sorts uh, here on the order of this. The they flashbacks been, aren't exactly in order, I don't yeah. think. I, mean, I don't think they're helpful. Her grave. <laughs> That's when he trained up for two years, right? And then somehow got caught and went, or then maybe then killed went, the dude. Right, then went and killed the dude. And then went to prison. Yes. Okay, so we've pieced this together. There we, we got go. it. All right, so that's what's happened. So he's, he, but the one thing that he says when he's talking to Ghost Uncle mm. is, I want to learn how to do whatever the martial arts style right. is. His uncle knows a specific kind of martial arts. He wants to know that so he can be a hero and fight for the people. There you go. There so it it's basically, they just told you this <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. this is his character. That's what he wants. <laughs> that's what he wants to know. That's, that's, that's his goal. Yep. So I think just the fact that uh, a prisoner, you know, it's like, this is the sympathetic old guy who was supposed to get out. And right. even his backstory, he wasn't like a raging psychopath or something. Right. And he was bullied and picked on. And so Ricky is the champion he, he is, of the is, underclass. Yes. Very emotional over the injustice of this man, yep. and that's it. There like, you go. The injustice drives him so nuts at that point that he's fighting the rain. And I think that the movie has like a series of events like that. It's like always he's championing the uh, the underdog, right? Well, yeah, because it's a it's a set of circumstances. Because he does one thing to defend somebody else, and then somebody else dies because of that. So then he has to avenge that and fight for the people again, and so on and so forth. And it's just it builds up, and he's got to you know continue through the story. It does have like, um, and again, having not read the comic that it's based on, right. but it seems like it's like episodic, like you would have an issue where, you know, he has to deal with the the boss, the crime boss of the right. cell block. And then that escalates where now the bad guy is, uh, you know, because then he has to, after the, the old guy is dies, he has to take on, they release Mad Dog on him, the Mad Dog fighter. Mad Dragon. Mad Dragon. Yeah, the Mad Dragon, who's just a, a giant baby who's been in a cell drooling on himself for probably months at this point. And yeah, they release him. He's like, oh, the Mad Dragon's out. He's gone mad. You know, he, he just, he'll go nuts. Yeah. And so he is confronted in the shower by the Mad Dragon, who is a very large gentleman, um, who, who gets a good punch in and sends um, um, Lee flying into the wall. But that's the last punch that man's going to get. Yeah. Because Lee is going to punch his guts out. Actually, yeah, I know you just said this, and I'm slow, and I just caught up <laughs> on it, but, like, uh, his name is Lee Kwong? Lee Kwong. But it's the story of Ricky? Ricky O? Yeah, where does that come into play? <laughs> I mean, but I'm guessing that because- They never it, even he, say that. No, not at all. Ricky, there's but no- I'm, I'm, But I'm guessing- Who the fuck is Ricky O, then? <laughs> but, well, like I said, his ghost uncle renamed him to Lee Kwong. So he might have been so Ricky I think before he was we Ricky, missed it. I think he was Ricky Where before. did this title come but from? But I also don't remember, again, this is subtitled, and I may not have grasped everything, but maybe it was mentioned before in the subtitles before he was renamed Li Kuang. Um, which right, because we do know what I'm going yeah, with. We remember he was renamed. So what's right. he? Re okay, so. but then it's it's not his story. Then if he got fucking <laughs> renamed, like it's oh my god, I hate. Okay, I really hate that about this movie now. But uh, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. But it's uh, it's still annoying. Yeah. Weird. Okay, so yeah, I just, I I just yeah. came over there. Uh, yep. I was like, wait, there's Glad a you reason. Pointed that there's out a reason. He, I did not connect that. There's a reason. His uncle says it. There's a reason he renamed him Lee Kwong. Yeah, at a certain point, I but do not for, for them to not even say though from Ricky O, we like they don't even right. mention it. Like you were Ricky, yeah. Now you are Lee Kwan. Yeah, they don't I, well, say he that. He might. I, I don't remember the what he was saying in the. Uh, it happened in the graveyard. In the graveyard, yeah. Okay. But it's also no one ever calls him that at any other ever. point in the yeah. movie. No, like they all the call girl, him long, I right? Think. The other girl doesn't in the flashbacks. The other girl doesn't ever call yeah. him. Yeah, that I believe. Yeah, um, yeah so it's. Very Why the fuck is mentioned. it called this? <laughs> we just got to go with it. Hmm. That's what who we um, was, and then he was okay. Lee Kwong. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I have to is. look that one up. Um, but Mad right. Dragon. So he fights the Mad Dragon. How does he subdue? How does he best the Mad Dragon? He he literally punches his guts out. Like he gets yeah. down and like sideswipes his stomach with his fist and just digs it out. Right. It's and pretty then, gross. Yeah. <laughs> I think he may punch him in the head as well. There were so yeah. many. Deaths that are so gory, we may mix up what happened to some of these people. Yeah, yeah. Because just yeah. entrails and body parts are he, flying off. I think like he gets crazy. punched in, like Mad Dragon. I think gets punched in the head and explodes again. Then the 
the other boss who had who now has his eye and everything bandaged up who like I thought these people were going to stick around longer little did I know about this movie <laughs> that, uh, he but, thought they were like going to be the big enemies right, but no right, no no it's like oh no there is more to come yeah, He's like yeah. a small fish at this point but he also gets I think his head punched in and explodes uh, when he is also punched so he dies so those two die and then Lee Kwong Ricky is taken I think to the uh, assistant um Warden. Warden at this point. Yeah, yeah I because I think they're... there's a little bit of, you know, like, will you join the, uh, well, no, I think they. They take him back to his cell. Yeah, but they sick the um, the the gang of four. Yeah. Right? Uh, Not no yet. I think yeah, because the, there's, I think a, there's like a second, like, sympathetic character here, which is the godson of. The Raging Sea. So, yeah, like oh, so, so or wait, something like that? Raging Sea was the, he was one of the Gang of Four, and he yeah. fights him, and he kills him. I don't yeah, remember that's, how. That's after he beats up Mad Dragon yeah. and everything. Is there a scene with him? Uh, this is something I remember from the Mortal Kombat uh, games, and they also did it in, um, was it Romeo is Bleeding? One of those Jet Li movies ah. also did, where... Uh, the hero punches a guy and we see like an x-ray of like the fist going into the guy's face and shattering. It's, all the yeah, uh, that might be later, I think, because he's up, he's upside down, I think, because the skull, the x-ray oh, Because he kicked the guy into the air and then I think punches punch him in the face and we yeah, see the yeah, x-ray. Yeah, yeah. And then we get, the, yeah, we see the fist going into him. I think that was right. You're right. I think that was Raging See. He does that too. Yeah. Because yeah. I think later, you know, like uh, it was a Jet Li movie and now I don't remember which one, but they actually did it where you could you know it was like a cg overlay you so you see, see everything see moving this everything. is a you know like a, a static it's like, it's x-ray. like they showed an x-ray and then yeah. they put that fire um energy over it that it w- was shown earlier that lee kwong has um and then it cuts back to him so he's just like oh yeah. he broke all the bones in that guy's face yeah he, he gone. he's dead I so that was raging so yes so i think the um so again, episodic, right? We've we've yeah. avenged young Ma or old Ma's death. Now we have the godson of Raging Sea. Well, I think who, it's So, and he Sa Sa Sa. Oh, yes, that's right. Because Ricky is not only because he's a flutist. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, a leaf flutist, a flautist. Yeah, he mm-hmm. can play a leaf. He can play a leaf. You can play like a, a leaf. But play a leaf like a flute. Like it sounds right. like a flute when he plays it, which is not possible. Not possible. Like, is I mean, not, I we, think we're we may be uh, picking at something in a movie where people <laughs> explode when punched, <laughs> but but this movie spends so much time on this scene, and this is where I was like, okay, this is what I hate about movies right. like this. They hit this lull about some symbolic shit that I I'm not here for. Give me more, you know. If nothing I'm, else, we're setting up more of of why he keeps going on because yeah. he becomes sympathetic to a character who was raging sea's godson mm-hmm. which is sa mm-hmm. um who has had his tongue cut out and so but he looks up to uh lee kwong so much that he has a pile of leaves in his lap trying to play them like lee, lee kwong right. does and he's unable to we realize because his tongue was cut out because lee kwong was like you have to fold your tongue back and then they really yeah. blow on it he's like i have no tongue <laughs> right and that's great and that's where it should have stopped but then, and then well, they well, keep then he gives going him the, well then he gives him the flute you got to give him emotional stakes michaela this yeah. is why you, you would maybe isn't being in prison the emotional stake is it? I, I don't want to fucking the be personal here. character but, work. Why he I, would yeah, need to I, avenge these people? I like that, but but you told that much more succinctly than they did. You know what I'm saying? Like they take too long yeah. to make this very simple point. Well, yeah. it's it's like, but, but, but but then he, then the saw gets to frolic around the courtyard with his flute because he finally because he finally found happiness because he couldn't play the <laughs> yeah. leaves, but he can yeah. play the flute because he yeah. doesn't need his tongue. Yeah, because it's gone. Yeah. Well, the the reason for this, I think, right? They have to keep on giving you something to you know, as Sean was saying, to build to that next. Because we're about to introduce right. like the poppy leaves and all that means right. well, that there's like, heroin. And yeah. so right. that leads to like, you know, what's actually going on at the prison because we haven't laid in what you usually get in the prison movie, which is I'm in prison, but the reason I need to get out is still out there and in danger. And so I have to right. find a way to break out of prison. Uh, he never seems like he's interested in escaping. Right. No, that's that what great. doesn't make any sense. What is his motive? It seems like I think it is just that stated thing. I think he earns thing. that as he's in the prison. He's like the hero of the. He's standing up for these other people, and right. this is an illustration of that, yeah. right? The because then this guy, uh, the godson, who Saw, yeah. mm-hmm. he ends up, uh, he's overheard in the mm-hmm. courtyard. You know that now the bad guys know that uh, uh, Wong knows 
Keep it on calling Ricky. That that can we just call him Ricky? Yeah, let's call him Ricky. All right, let's call him Ricky. <laughs> it's his yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but uh, um, Sa presents him with a leaf, and it's a poppy leaf. Like, Where'd you yeah. get this? Right, exactly. But like, I understand that prison is bad, and no one wants to be there. I don't need the added stakes of and they're selling drugs. It's like prison wanting to escape from prison that's enough of a conflict right there like if you don't want to escape from I don't think yeah he wants to. but this is like a hat on a hat you know like i don't like you don't need to make the prison seem worse by being like and they were growing drugs it's like prison's already bad enough on its own it, it yeah, doesn't need this extra gotta, he's, he's gotta find more injustice to his moral character at this point isn't i mean i just being in prison is terrible enough in itself i guess it's just too it's just it's a hat on a hat you know it's like <laughs> We already got him. Do we need well, it another? ties it back. I know that they did. It, well, what I guess we it's his personal tie in, right? Yeah. So we we explain yeah. that to you ahead of the, the, when the movie does. Yeah. The movie parses these flashbacks out. So you don't realize at this point in the story that like he has this past hatred of uh, heroin dealers right. because it ultimately led to the, the death of his girlfriend. Right. So at this point, it's just like he's all, you know, in furious that uh you know that there's poppies being drugs in prison How yeah. Dare you? yeah and so he's scandalized by it he is and this introduces um the warden i think right like because the idea is that the warden has been gone yes uh for a period in of Hawaii, time I think. <laughs> and he's ultimately in charge of he's been yeah growing mm. uh poppy fields here in the prison and somehow producing uh, heroin. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so he becomes the ultimate big bad guy. The warden arrives on the scene in a Cadillac. Mm-hmm. Um, With his son? I think so. He's like an infantilized uh, boy who wanders around. He's, like like, a, he's an infantilized schoolboy, basically. That yes. you, yeah, that you always see in like these, uh, in, in Japanese uh, animation, they always draw these kids. Uh, like, I'm surprised exactly. you didn't have a little okay, propeller head I on. Can't, <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. This is a character trope I cannot get on board with. I'm, so, I'm sorry. As soon as this character showed up, I was like, I fucking hate this. And oh, I can't no. wait for them all to get the right. fuck out of I here. I think you're supposed to. And but I like, think it's the purpose. You're just like, I don't it's like. It's shorthand. For, I but mean, the, does this movie need this? Him. Like you know, what I'm saying like there's already enough hateable people in this movie that this is just it's like really a, laying it on thick. The rogues gallery in this movie it, it's it's weirder and weirder. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's it. Seems like what they're doing. It's like they all have very distinct like um, stylistic appearances. Yeah, um, which and, I like. I like like a villain persona. You know, yeah. I like that. And Hell um, is the only woman in this. Right? Yeah, yeah. But is she supposed to be a guy? Don't know because I questioned the whole time, but I think. Him, but, I think but we're like, oh, that's a, a woman. No, I think that she's role. supposed to be a woman. She dressed. She's uh, the. I looked her a, up because I was. I was like, is it? And it is. It's a woman no, no, playing I think, that part. I think she's supposed to be a woman. Why is she in a men's prison? Don't know. Okay. She's that bad, Colin. Well, she could not. They could not keep her in a women's. Yeah. She had to go to the men's prison. <laughs> and how come uh, these folks can't break? I mean, well, I guess it's because they're they're you know the gang of four is living right, the, is, the right, life here, right? right? They, the, oh, the yeah, the other prisoners lack leadership to, in order to like rise up against this yeah. oppression of the gang of four. So, um, a bunch of stuff then befalls Ricky, right? Is he because the warden wants to challenge him in uh right. in, in many different ways. I can't even keep it Stab, straight. Stabs like, him in the hand, break, we break a table. Uh Ricky's like, don't ever challenge me again at this point because he walks out of there with his photograph and everything. So they have a little standoff in the office that doesn't go the warden's way or the assistant warden's well, he's way. He's like, you're the strongest. He's the strongest. Right. <laughs> he's yeah. like a demon. You know, he's the well, strongest. Right, right. This is where he stops. Uh, stops uh, like very Batman-esque. He stops a bullet with a with a, a silver plate. Um, yeah, to, to show his dominance. Ends up back in his cell. And then I think we end up fighting with... Because then he sends the, the lackeys to basically kill Ricky, right? Mm-hmm. That's where it becomes at this point. Because they do, they kill the um, Saw. They kill Saw. Yeah, this is where he gets the bottom half of his face sliced off, and then we find him later skinned. Dude, yeah. yeah, that Courtyard. was brutal. Like, it, ooh, all, all of this, very brutal, very... Yeah. Uh, maybe graphic. more maybe graphic, maybe more realistic than I needed it to be. <laughs> yeah, there was a couple points where I had to look away a little bit. I was like, just like, oh, yeah. geez, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's too especially much. in the third act. Ooh, yeah, yeah, shit got real. Like, because it's you know, it's more acceptable when it's a little more comical and explodey, but it is all very quote unquote real looking. Well, and there's like, you know what I mean? Everything is like blades. 
you know, yeah. or like fists. It's not like it's not guns. Like guns are very impersonal, you know. Whereas mm. like the blades and the everything is sharp weaponry. It's yeah. just very stabbing, lots cutting, of deep bloods. flesh wounds. Yeah, yeah it's, deep flesh. Oh yeah, we yeah. even forgot in the in the fight with uh, with Raging Sea. <laughs> yeah, like he gets sliced in the arm, and then he tie and he can't fight with that arm because the tendon has yeah. been severed, and he fucking ties it back together. He and pulls he throws, it out. <laughs> there is it, it's he, an elaborate he, scene. He made me a little wheezy with his, yeah. with his teeth. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's pulling and tying the tendon back because the guy's like, "Aha! I've crippled you, and you can't do it." And he just pulls it out, <laughs> pulls it's, it out with his teeth, ties, ties it, it up, together, puts it back in. Like, <laughs> Aha. It's like the opposite of what Denzel did in Virtuosity. Denzel took that thing out of his arm and put it in the, to yeah. connect the wires. This guy like oh. tied up. That's all you gotta do, right? You just gotta tie your tendons together. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Tie it up. You're good. Yeah, but, like he fixed his arm. Uh. But, but he also threw glass dust in his eyes, like oh, ground yeah. up glass. Yeah. Oh, that makes my stomach like drop. Uh. Like, oh, he's like, and I've blinded dust. you. Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme handled it better. <laughs> Eyes I mean, that was like dust, though, wasn't it? Chalk sure. dust or something? It wasn't even glass. It was like chalk dust. Maybe yeah. it was chalk dust. Maybe it was glass. It was yeah. chalk dust. Yeah. Yeah. In blood yeah. sport. Yeah. 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 This one, glass dust. Ricky's bleeding from the eyes. So then he punches the sewer hole right. cover <laughs> and, and it washes it. And he's fine. Yeah. Uh, he's always fine. I don't yeah. think he has uh, any of the scars of no, any he of these wolves no. later. He yeah, a healing factor. Honestly, he I kept powers. waiting for them to like reveal a healing factor with the super strength. Because yeah, I was I like, that would make sense. I, I think it's in there. Yeah. I mean, they don't necessarily uh, address it mm -hmm. right on, but he heals from everything real quick. Because again, later on, he uh, does have a mouthful of razor blades that cut the shit out of his face. That made but me a little a perfect looking sick human to being stomach, by the end yeah. of this movie. That was fa a fantastic scene. Mm -hmm. They're trying to torture him. So they yeah. shove, uh, I think this is Hell, shoves razor blades. I think it's the warden. Was oh it? no, hell doesn't. You're right. You're and right. then start smacking him because <laughs> yeah. uh, Ooh, white guy's yeah. been hitting him with a wrench, and, you know, back yeah. and forth. And uh, hell put yeah puts the, the razor blades in his mouth, tapes it shut, smacks him a bunch of times so the razor blades come out his cheeks, yep. which I thought was a good look. I'm it's like, good. is he gonna have this for it the rest of the movie? Look. He's got yeah. like a ladder of razor blades out both sides of his mouth, Oof. and he does spit those back at yeah. the warden and gets them stuck in stuck his stuck in his head, which yep. is a pretty cool <laughs> effect. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, so the effects work in this, so I. I guess the director, from what I do know of him, he was a special effects director uh, uh, in Japanese cinema. Makes sense. So, so I guess, what do you think of the, I mean, on this show, obviously we've seen a lot of very gory effects stuff. I don't know what the budget was on this, Ooh. but I mean, what what do you think of the effectiveness or how realistic it looked? I guess you were talking it about some great. of it. Is, I, oh, no, very good. Yeah, yeah, very good, very effective. Um it's a little bit of like that too red blood, you know, like it needs that drop of blue, like Bruce Campbell would say. But um, it's still like I don't know, just like the way the flesh moves and everything else. It it, it yeah. looks really good. Yeah, it we still really get a. Good. There are still a lot of scenes of like, oh, he stabbed him in the dummy hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you're just like, that's a dummy hand. Yeah. yeah. And so we still get a lot of that, but it works within the movie. Oh, I, I mean, and now it works within the charm of the movie. I think. So, yeah, I think it when, matches the. Yes. You're right. Yeah. yeah, it's like it. I think because some of them are a little bit dodgy. You know, sure. you oh, see, yeah. you know, the, clearly that guy's head is a dummy right before right. it explodes, or you know, right, whatever. Right, right. Um, or some guy's wearing an appliance right before right. it explodes or whatever. Right. But but we're somehow, also still, the three of us sitting here as these things happen going, oh! Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they, they take it a step further than I expect them to every time. Yeah. They always like linger longer or they show more than I think they're going to. And that's what really gets me yeah. is like when I don't know exactly what to expect, you right. know? Point so. being, I think it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it works for most okay people. You're okay with it, you know, within the, the tone of the movie. Right. Yeah. It's like the movie's not serious. No, no, no. No, not at all. No, the characters themselves are, are serious in what they're doing, but the whole thing. The tone not, of the movie is yeah, not, yeah, though, yeah. not serious. It's very over the top. Yeah. Yes. Um, but like it, deli so. but it delivers on it, though. Like, I hate when a movie pretends like it's over the top and then it's really not. Right. Couldn't you... Salt burn, like oh, everyone's talking about how insane that movie is. It's not that crazy, interesting, uh, interesting. especially for people like us that watch shit like this all the yeah. time. That is but fucking like it's nothing. Nuts. It's just like ah, I have think you seen Ricky. <laughs> I, I think Salt you Burn should. is a perfect example of what we've been saying for a long time: is that movies are puritanical now. So the one time we get something that's a little weird, everyone's like, oh my god, because we are not used to it. You know, yeah, yeah. so we here on the freak right, show, yeah. the freak we have show. the tolerance. Yeah, the freak show, get used to it. Yeah, yeah, get, get, yeah, I like that. That's our new tagline. Get used to it. Get yeah. used to it. I like that. But I like, yeah, I wouldn't say we're like 
desensitized because like you said sean we were all reacting we're still we're like, affected oh by shit it. yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. it know? may take some explosions yeah. of heads and some swiping of, yeah. of guts and strangulations of people who are trying to commit harry carry but right we, we, you get there but there's Arms some shit i've everything. never seen before yep. in this movie so that's yeah, pretty cool and i think the addition the thing that um that i think in a in a more modern movie Right, I, that I I can't even imagine. I can't even think of anything that that's done what this movie did. Is the um, it's like the blood um, when somebody gets injured, right? Copious amounts of blood come out of them. Yeah. It's that it's like Stuart Gordon blood, right? Yes. It feels very messy, like it's slopping all yeah. over the walls. Yeah. It's, it's slopping all yeah. over the yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like you well, know, yeah. like, it's like, like, like we have a lot of, of blood in us. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. movie makes me feel. We're just a bunch of like juice boxes basically walking around according yeah. to this movie a, a lot of hawaiian yeah. punch juice boxes yeah. just it's walking like, around ready to get poked it's with a like straw. you ever you ever do your capri sun wrong where you go through the back and it <laughs> oh, yeah, that's this, is, this movie yeah, right this is this, this is, is a, this movie this is the poke yeah. out the back of yeah, the capri yeah, sun yeah. all over the place yeah. everyone's just getting poked out the back and they're leaking all over yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Leak, a lot of leaking a lot yeah. of leaking a lot of yeah a lot of leaking a lot of spraying um the um the warden eventually is going to become the main bad guy in the yes. movie. There's a couple of scenes um, where he seems to, he needs medication, right? Because they're like, there's something wrong with him. He's like, oh, I need, I need my medication. You're like, right. he's going to and have a heart bring, attack or right. he's frail or something. No, they bring up sugar. They bring up Mike and Ike's. They bring up uh, candies. And <laughs> they licorice. stuff Red Hots in his mouth red like hots, he's yeah, dying. Like, <laughs> it's a, I didn't, it's a weird choice. How yeah. did you read that scene when you saw it? You're like, are they just... Are we supposed to, like well, clearly those are candies? It, yeah, I, but I, I don't. I, but I think that's it. I think they're just they're supposed to be medicine. I think they are just. You think? Use, I, I think so. You don't think he's just? It's like the sugar. It's hard, but it's hard to tell because is he it's diabetic kid, and he's like because spike his kid his at the moment this happens is chowing down on soda and red vines and licorice and everything. So it's hard to tell if that's like a thing <gasps> between those two. Is it like a rich people thing? Mm -hmm. Is it like if I don't have my sugar every four hours or whatever, like Maybe, I can't live? But and, like, there's nothing. Well, there is a, of a it. surprising reveal later on. In the movie, that uh, when he turns into a giant raging, what like, the fuck was that? It was like the only thing that came to mind was that at the time I was thinking about Mortal Kombat, you know, because I guess that was in my mind. So I'm sure. like, this is uh, Gorgo or something Goro. like yeah. Goro. The the idea that there's going to be a giant. I honestly thought he was going to turn into Bolo Young. Yeah. I thought so. Uh, uh, I honestly, this movie could have used a Bolo Young appearance. Yeah. It would like how is he not? Doesn't he look like a guy that would be like a prison baddie, right? This like, does. but this guy who plays um, Ricky basically, I thought looked like a you know, like he yeah, is he's, your he's, Bolo he's Young. Big, he's yeah. muscly. He never wears a shirt like right. in the entire right, movie. Yeah. Um, they try to uh, uh, bury him alive. There's this whole thing oh, where, like, yeah. we're going to bury him for seven days, and if he lives, we're going to dig him out, and they force all the uh, the convicts to, like, put dirt on him. Uh, One at a time. Shovel some dirt on him. And then they give him, like, a, a pole to, or whatever. It's <laughs> they like give a, him a bamboo shoot to, to breathe out of to see if he can last for seven days. And he I turns like, it into a flute. You called it, though. You were like, oh, my God, it's a giant flute. It's and then the next scene, then, okay, was he whistling to that dog so. to help dig him out? Maybe. Not is that possible. what was happening? Maybe it's possible, because but he is. He did turn it into a flute. Yeah, so he's fluting it. <laughs> it's like he's, he's and a dog shows it's like up. He's fluting to the prisoners. He's like, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. because he becomes. I think at this point, right? It's like, it's like yeah. he's the hero of the people, yes. and they have Ricky as the and they're, champion, oh right? And they're willing to fight for him. It's like, fuck these assholes. Let's kill them. Yeah. Okay. Is, spoiler alert for the 2013 cry. movie Prisoners. Did the end of Prisoners see this movie? Is, think of the very last scene yelling? with Jake Gyllenhaal I, yeah. and the whistle. Oh, there is a is it a whistle? He there has a whistle, whistle right? and yeah. he's buried underground, and that's how he's letting uh, Hugh Jackman I'm gonna, I'm know that he's there. There's no connection. <laughs> you don't think so? That's no. a Denny Villeneuve I'm, I'm, movie. I'm, I'm going to say so? you you have something you like versus something you just saw, and you're just putting them together. I'm going to say no that they have not seen this movie. No, I don't. Denny Villeneuve is, seems like a pretty film literate guy. Sure. When he goes to the Criterion Closet, does he pick out the story, the story of, of Ricky? Ricky o, yeah. Right. Or is he going to the Cat Channel? Who knows? Cat channel. We don't know. <laughs> Thank you. 
you Criterion for the Thank cat you Criterion collection. Criterion for the yeah. cat channel. Yeah. I really appreciate it. There's a whole it. bunch of movies on that channel <laughs> yeah, that just cats. have cats in right. them. Right, some that we have reviewed on this show. Yeah, yeah. there's Go some check it really out. fucking good movies on that list, yeah. though. Yeah, and including wild. Sleepwalkers yeah. is on the Criterion <laughs> yeah. channel. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to say, along with Cat from Outer Space, yep. Yep. and Cat and, People, uh, and Cat yeah. People, yeah. and Two Evil Eyes, Inferno, Dario yeah. Inferno. Inferno. Inferno, and yeah, check Wild. it out. Check out in the Criterion channels, yeah. <laughs> um, which is uh, right now. I think the only way that you can actually see the story of right. Ricky uh, yeah. streaming seems like a good streaming service, though. Sorry, we're not being sponsored or anything, but just from what little bit we browsed before we watched this, I was like, it looks pretty legit. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, they got Near Dark on there. Oh, oh huh? fuck yeah. yeah! See, I still have my DVD, and I'm very tempted to sell it all the time is because the I have the good one. No, I have the good like uh, gradient one with their silhouettes uh, on it, not the non Twilight one. Oh, oh, you don't. Have I have okay. the non Twilight one. Twilight one uh, was going for like ninety bucks at a certain point. Oh, see, I could sell this one for more than that, oh, even shit. because it's and it's a standard def DVD. I know. Too, I, but, I sold yeah. that one. Yeah. Oh, Salad, yeah. the, uh, um, salad. Yeah. but I like near dark. So yeah, yeah. But that I, and I the like devils are on there. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so sorry if you're listening to this. Listen like, to our episode on near this? dark. Yeah, yeah. How do I see this movie? It's uh, Criterion on the Criterion Channel. Channel. Um, so he has to. So he's buried alive. Uh, they dig him up. He's still alive. He punches a bunch of people and kills them. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's still uh, the champion of the people. Um, and he has to. F- I th- believe obviously he's going to have to fight through the the remaining. Th- Gang of four, which is three of them, right? Right, yeah. So, yeah, what is he? Tarzan, I think, is the next one. Okay, what happens there? Because after he gets dug up, he is, he is brought in and he's put in a prison and watched by the warden, which has a metal press in it, which will squish him. It's, it's like the end of uh, Terminator. Yeah. yeah. The metal press. I love that. I love the, the ceiling in this, you know, because <laughs> it's is like, a Bond moment. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. of it. yeah. it's like, yeah, right. And it's, it's like, a- wow, this jail has really invested in ways to murder its people. <laughs> a, a, a really a lot. Yeah, it's, they it's, have a lot of contraptions for murder here. Right, but yeah. in those old, um, and I, I'll say Bond again, but in those old Bond technology ways where it just is just like just uh, I mean, when they were doing the X-ray earlier, just a metal bank that could in no way x-ray someone and it does and then this just has you know they're they're um the pits of misfortune for these people <laughs> at, this, at this point where we move from one to the other well didn't and, he like after he got it like he survives the press right i think he just, yeah yeah because he yeah because yeah, he's pushing it up and then pushing it up and then pushing it up and then um tarzan is it tarzan yeah uh, it comes in and he breaks through a wall and he comes in there and, and tries to kill him and they have a fight as well this is where tarzan gets punched through the chin into yeah the mouth which and is, is cool bleeding. And then Tarzan kind of turns because the warden and the assistant warden have no affection for him. They're just like, yeah, you were just a you know, tool for us. And and he even talks to them and is like, you leave, you think I was dead and you leave me? And so at a certain point, he is the one who saves Ricky by holding up the press as Ricky jumps through the bars. Jumps safety. through the bars. He yeah. smashes them. Smashes like metal open. bars. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, Tarzan, please come on. And he's like, ah, I cannot make it. And then. Tarzan gets swished. And he's but gone. then Ricky, I want to say at this point, like you were saying about like this, uh, there's a trap door in the there's floor. There's a trap door in a pit. He goes down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I think that happens, and then he goes to the pit. Then they bury him. Then they right. bury him. Yeah. Then yes. they bury him out in the in the yard. Uh, he gets out of that, and then uh, they encase him in. Well, there's like the whole prison explodes with like uh, uh, a cement. Right, they're trying yeah. to. Yeah, they try. Yeah, he he uh, to try cover to him with cement, cement <laughs> which he again he won't be able to move. Of, well, yeah, but it, it does get him right. Oh well, I mean, yeah, because yeah. they they cement yeah. him up and then they put him in a room so I think the warden can come and check. And then he just like flexes all his muscles yep. and breaks out of the cement, breaks yep. the chains. He's always breaking everybody's chains. Breaking every chain. He's always crashing through walls, breaking uh, out of handcuffs by yeah. just like yanking them apart. Yep. It's great. And um. And then he fights uh, Hell and the White God. God. Yeah, and I don't recall. This is a this is an elaborate one because White God gets a through uh, gets a few things through him. They fight uh, earlier. There was a fight in the in the in the courtyard, but then the the like I don't know. Order sixty six comes down and they're they're shooting machine guns at them and they all have to leave. But I think that was way earlier. Well, yeah. What is the last fight between them? How does White God die? Oh, oh! Well, they're. Uh, I think they're all fighting in the like the kitchen. At the, I know how White God dies because okay. people are getting bl- uh, blown up. We know that uh, the warden has a gun that when he shoots people, they will explode. 
It has, yes. is a, it's like some bullets that are used to kill elephants or something. They, Shh. they okay. <laughs> it uh, it, ha- it inflates and inflates and explodes <laughs> them. Yes, because he does this to someone at a certain point. Oh, the assistant warden, he does it. Yeah, because he pissed him off, and so he shoots the assistant warden, and we're like, <laughs> we shoots him, and then it cuts to a man who is a little more bulbous. And we're like, what's happening? Yeah, <laughs> yep. And then he gets something. huger and bigger, and then boom. <laughs> this movie has him. body horror elements to it's it, so many. which I did not expect. So many. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was horrified at every yeah. body <laughs> moment in this movie. Uh, so he gets that, yeah. And then, um, uh, how does he beat Hell? I don't remember. Hell gets her remember. arm chopped off by someone. Oh, yeah, because like, uh, she's yeah. writing on the floor. It's, oh, because, yeah, he breaks. I, cu- I couldn't tell if it was like a scalding uh, water that was coming out or if it was freezing. Mm. And she punches it and gets her hand stuck. And he's like, now I've crippled you and blah, blah, blah. And right. he karate chops her hand and breaks it off. Right, right. And then, uh, yeah, she's writhing around on the ground. Right. And so and then- White God is scared of, at this point and he's retreating and all that stuff. Um, he goes to an elevator that will take him out, but then he gets shot uh, the, by the warden, warden again. Him. And then he explodes into that little elevator. And so our main bosses are gone, or our main lower bosses are gone. And so now it's warden on ricky fight and and the war and this is where the warden's just like ah ah and then he expands into a into the hulk yeah but it's, just that's a, what was going on there right that, you see yeah. all the close-ups of uh, the shirt, shirt ripping, ripping and, and all that muscles expanding, he's just giant heads rrr. getting taller and 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 he turns into a horrifying <laughs> exaggerated cartoonish version of himself that is just a muscled huge being and it's disturbing that fight doesn't go on that long, though, because Ricky immediately, like, yeah. I think, punches him through the gut. A couple times, yeah. He punches him in the gut, gets him in the chest, and then ends up, like, picking him up and throwing him into the... Uh, oh, the meat grinder. Yeah, the... the Whatchamacallit, yeah. Well, there's yeah. a scene in the meat grinder that sets this up, because there's a convict, I want to say, who's, like, working at... and him into Cuisinart. Is that what... Yeah. And basically, the guy's like, it's something about you don't have enough to eat. Well, I'm going to put, you know, he puts oh, his right. arm puts in the there. He puts the guy's arm in there and turns it, yeah, whatever the whatever meat they're putting in there turns it into, you know, ground beef. Yeah. That was the warden, wasn't it? Yeah. And well, he does he one guy's up- arm earlier, and the warden ends up in there, and he slowly pushes him down. And there's just so much blood at this point. Like, meat is coming out. Blood is squirting everywhere. <laughs> Ricky's red- covered in it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it is. This room is painted red. <laughs> oh, this is so much. <laughs> it reminded me of... You know, the end of Motel Hell when they're having the chainsaw fight and there's just blood like all over that room. That's yeah. kind of what this reminded me of. Just like the way yeah. it's splattering in every direction. It goes on for so much longer than you'd think. Yeah. yeah. I, think, yeah, kinda, kinda I was like, Evil wow. Evil Dead 2013 wow. as yeah. far as like just blood. The amounts of blood. Of yeah. yeah. There you go. Actually, I and said they, no modern movie, but yeah. the Evil right. Dead movies evil, and yeah. Evil Dead Rise just, did it yeah. too. I feel the, like, yeah. just, God damn, they're covered in yeah. blood. Yeah. Like they'll be digging that out for weeks. Right. Yeah. So now with flesh wounds in this movie. My God. Yeah, just <laughs> well, many. out in the courtyard, right? The the there's an insurrection happening between the uh, the prisoners and the guards. Yes, and Ricky comes out with the the head, <laughs> the head of the warden. Yeah, of, the, of, the of like the warden. puffy, deformed, yeah, yeah. like power up warden, of super yeah. shredder. Well, he's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's super, he's super shredder, shredder warden. Yeah, there yeah. We go. and he's like, what was he say? He's like, you don't have to fight. And he threw the warden's head, and I thought we were going to get a close up of that thing, like the eyes glowing yeah, against, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, because didn't he? Yeah, the the one eyed uh, snake wa- uh, assistant warden. He hit him once, and his eyeball uh, his popped, other eye out. popped yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. he could still see. And the, yeah, the, yeah, the, that made no sense. The prisoners beat him and killed him. Right, they chopped his so arm off, and then the, the yeah, shift they of power him. is happening. Yeah, they them. revolted. Yep, 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 as always happens. And um, at the end, Ricky approaches the. Tall cinder block or cement, cement wall, walls yeah. of mm-hmm. the prison and smashes through it. Energy wise, he gets yeah. his energy back. And then, because there was talk with his uncle earlier on, it's like, you have this energy that builds up inside you, and then you can use it. And he's like, and so he uses it to punch that fucking wall down. Yeah. Uh, Not the like wires just that, pulled it, yeah. uh, that pulled all the things away helped. Uh, yeah, yeah, saw yeah, yeah, a lot of them, but yes. Well, yeah. it was impressive wire work prior to that. We didn't, you know, oh, yeah. people being hit, punched and flying into there the was, and it's just like, where's the wire? There's some good like yeah. moments mm-hmm. in that. But here yeah. you can see that they pulled the. Yes, I mean, it's not like a, a man sized hole. No, no, it's no like it the is. wall comes down enough for a whole yeah. prison uh, people to leave. And then Ricky strides triumphantly out. Yes, of people. the prison, leading everybody behind him. Is accomplished. That is the story of Ricky. It is. Yeah. 
That was so Man, I bet the adrenaline rush you get getting out of prison must be like <laughs> peak, right? Like whether you're escaping or being released lawfully, I, I, you, I bet sure. it's I the best the feeling. Is a bit more, but yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there was that one guy a couple of months ago that was on the run for like what three weeks or something. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Not got I, out of prison. The guy so, yeah. like Spider Man. Sp- yeah, he spider crawled the wall. Escape from prison these days. I know, that and then be gone for mind, that long right? with how many cameras run? are around. Oof. I know it's fucking. He was caught on ring camera footage like six times before they caught him. It was oh my god, what a story. Make that into a movie. It was Ricky. Well, they legally won't allow you to inject the track. Or like escape from New York. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So you're gonna pass a law. Yeah. Uh, what to happen once you go into prison? Yep. You know, you go in, you don't come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's end on that. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so uh, now we're gonna tell you whether or not you should watch this movie on the Criterion Channel, <laughs> or you can order a Blu-ray um, by reviewing it uh, individually or telling you what our individual thoughts were on it. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, sir. I feel like he's had a few holes punched in him in his day. I think so. Yeah. I bet he went around this prison after it was everyone died, collected the body parts, oh, yeah, and yeah, made yeah. himself a mm-hmm. new body. Yep. All the eyes were ruined, though. No good eyes to be oh, found in this true. movie. Everybody that's got knocked got out. Yeah. Yellow eyes. Yeah. Those, those creepy yellow eyes. <laughs> uh, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X, formerly Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak, Freak, Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Yahoo. Com. Or you can follow along on Instagram threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, first of all, I'm going to read a message that we got uh, from Charlie Jones oh. wrote in and said, uh, Colin, Holly, Michaela, and Sean, a few years back, I was laying out on a sun drenched beach, but mentally in a very dark place. I needed a distraction. I searched for a podcast to escape into. My mind drifted to a simpler time from my childhood when 3D movies were all the rage and a question formed in my mind. <laughs> Metal Storm. The destruction of Jared's sin. Was that real or just a fever dream? <laughs> I half-heartedly typed it into the search, We're expecting the universe out. to confirm once again that I was alone. But words cannot express my excitement when your August 15th, 2017 episode appeared. I giggled as Colin described his nostalgic affection for the 3D craze of the 1980s while Sean, Holly, and Michaela expressed their dismay. <laughs> and Indeed. Sean's alternate title of superfluous travels through the mountains of, of nonsense <laughs> was really special somehow all four viewpoints summed up my affection and hatred for this horrible gem i felt seen and since then i've gone through much of your back catalog and look forward to every saturday morning today i'm in a much better place i'm not saying the freak show is my higher power but you were there when i needed you and thanks for keeping me company on this journey and keep up (laughs) The good work. Oh, thank, oh, thank you thank so you much. Very much. The feeling is mutual. Yes, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you found something in our show, and I'm glad yeah. it did something for you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much, yes. Charlie. For, for ah, Metal Storm. You did f- fucking <laughs> never Metal expected to heal people ago? through the power Jesus. of Metal Storm. But I know, but we end up talking about that. Like we reference it comes it, up like a, a lot. Yeah. Some movies stick with ball. you. Yeah. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ball. And, and, the, and the stuntman when they almost died. Yeah, that's what I remember that movie. A stunt person, I'm pretty sure, died on screen in that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so about tonight's movie, Ricky O, uh, the story of Ricky. Oh, <clears throat> so the people who voted for this reveal yeah, themselves. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Sobi Detura says, easily one of the most unique and insane films ever to put on celluloid. <laughs> one of my earliest memories of the film was when I was like 10. I went over to a cousin's house. So it was boring family stuff. I went into the lounge room and I saw one of my older teenage boy cousins silently watching one of the many violent scenes from this movie. Yeah. While I never learned the name of the film the film's gore and iconography stood out amongst the classic hong kong action films so it was easy to find Mm. this film is what happens when you adapt a violent as hell manga with a sense of earnestness that helps elevate the ridiculous as hell things that are happening on the screen indeed 
Uh, Dom Cree says, first of all, oh. Oh, how is Wong only 18 here? That's, what? Uh, not sure what the actor's name is. Oh, hold on. Sean's Googling it as we speak. Wow. He's Captain Google. But uh, oh, yeah, Wong's the character. Uh, Fen, Fancy Wong. Fancy Wong. Okay. He is the star. So he's 18 years old. 18? That's crazy. At the time That's he made nuts. this movie. That's crazy. He went on, I want to say, he's in those Ip Man movies with Donnie Yen. Yeah, yeah. I think yep. so. Yep, yep, yep. Those are um, good movies. But Dom says, dude is jacked and looks like he should have been cast in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. He's got insane, mind-bending gore that utilizes local supermarket dollar store materials <laughs> just enough to suspend any vomit-inducing sensations. <laughs> if it was up to me, I'd cut out all the dramatic bits that are dragging and just have it be a 60-minute, non-stop, eye-pop gore ride. Uh, he gets uh, 2.5 audience audience jolting eyeball trauma scenes out of five human skin while it's placed you need some, you need some room to breathe like I, yeah. uh, you know you love those scenes you gotta breathe in between them otherwise you're just gonna choke on gore you gotta breathe mm. you gotta breathe no you gotta breathe, breathe. <laughs> otherwise it's john wick breathe. four it's oh, no. non-stop action no time to no, breathe. I, I, me, I gotta breathe i can't i can't do it for that long uh adam kaler says i will never be able to unsee that meat grinder scene I yeah give the film, wow i give the film props for not shying away from the extremes but mixing food and gore is just so gross i'm it's, looking at you agreed. brain dead aka dead alive oh yep. that movie actually makes me a little sick to my stomach in certain the pudding, scenes the custard yes uh, yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> Last week, we watched a movie called Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Michael Piatowski writes in and says, Leslie Vernon is such a fun movie and always good to see Robert Englund pop up in a movie. You guys are the best podcast, unlike that one trick pony, Bill Simmons. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Take that, Bill Simmons. Ooh, we have a Thank beef you. now? All right. Are we gonna be- I'll start I don't, it. I'll start not, it. Are we beefing with Bill Simmons? Sure. Uh, why not? Okay. You do that. That's yours. I got. I okay. got plenty. I can't, yeah. I can't have any more. You can't carry all the beefs. I'm still apologizing to what's his name? Larry Black. No, no, no. Fuck no. Larry Block. Oh, uh, Ernesto Gastaldi. Ernesto Gastaldi. Okay. Oh, I'm still yeah, apologizing yeah. to Ernesto. Yeah. Please don't kill me. You, you have had a lot of beefs on your plate. You know, maybe no, I should no, no, take no. over for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else step up here. Like I can't be the only one who dies for this podcast. Well, Peter Gat writes in and says, "I watched Behind the Mask last night, and it was a total waste of time. Avoid this." <gasps> Well, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Like, you know, I can't yeah. say you should. You, know, you should flavor. love it. I can't say that. But, you know. Yeah. Um, the week before, we watched a movie called Witchery. And Jeff <laughs> Miller Jeez. writes in Jeff, and says. Jeff, why? He says, this was one of the most voted films by fans. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Agreed. That sums we, we up are, how we feel. Okay, but I get why, though. Because on the surface, you hear the title and you hear Dave Hassel, have Linda Blair, and I'm like, I'm sold. Sure, sure, sure. But then you uh, actually watch the movie. We'll and be it's checking different. on the security protocols of our voting system <laughs> uh, next year. Stop the steal! <laughs> Stop, the steal. <laughs> Stop the steal! <laughs> there may have been <laughs> some time. Uh, you, uh, some of you out there may be a little, a little smarter than the game we're playing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, have done your own work. But uh, again. <laughs> Uh, Steve Carney says, I started watching this on Tubi, but I turned it off after about five minutes, probably because it was from a VHS rip or didn't Oof. have subtitles. Should I Ooh. try a rewatch and give it another chance? No, Wait, no, what, what no, Witchery. No, Witchery? No, 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 don't try it. Just listen to our episode. I think it was, it was three against a one four. Yeah, yeah, yeah Colin so, liked it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah no. Uh, what, <laughs> I mean, you got crazy at the end. <laughs> but... I'll, I'll give Colin. We can't say Colin liked it. We can, it caught him on a good day. Caught me yeah. on a good day. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but he's, he recommended it. So. That's yeah, yeah, true. Recommended, not liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that means he, he he means he thinks other people should watch it. So that's what that, that question true. was. That is that's what, what the question was. That is what was. you're saying to yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. And that was so the question. Steve, there you yeah. go. You gotta, yeah, you gotta take it upon yourself there. Uh Michael Whitaker says, I think I've seen the lady in black mm. in a bar trying to get free drinks. <laughs> hey. <laughs> nice. What was her name? Great. Hildegard Hildegard uh, Neff. Hildegard Neff. Hildegard yeah. Neff. Yeah. She's got striking eyes. Yeah. So. This is true. Uh, yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, I don't want to hassle the Hoff, but as an actor, no, the guy so. couldn't convince me he could swim, let alone convince a woman she doesn't want to be a virgin, <laughs> unless so, with his help. I would have a str- had a stronger suspension of disbelief in a self-driving 1982 Trans Am with the voice of Mr. Feeney showing up and telling this young woman to get in and race her away from that place and the Hoff. And he says, Linda Blair was better in this than Exorcist 2. I could see how this movie would be fun and crazy to watch. Exorcist 2 is just long and boring. All you need is Exorcist and Exorcist 3. I have not seen Exorcist 2. Exorcist 2 is all... I, I mean, that's that's a, it's a freak yeah. show movie for yeah. sure, sure, but yeah. it's bad. Uh, uh, two things. I think Hoff has convinced many women uh, that they shouldn't be virgins anymore. 
And uh, and and number two, Mr. Feeney was the voice of Night Rider. Yeah, you didn't know that. Yeah, I may have known it before. I yeah. I, I, I must have forgotten yeah. it. But William, yeah. William Daniels shit. Or whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. I'm gonna watch that again. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Uh, was it uh, Val Kilmer in the remake Night Rider 2000? <gasps> oh my god, oh, no. I forgot Neither that existed. I, I totally. I, who you know was what? I've, Knight Rider? I've seen maybe 30 <laughs> seconds of the actual Night Rider. I can guarantee you, I've not <laughs> seen Night Rider. Well, 2000. now I gotta look it up because I'm curious. There you go. Uh, but. That would be all right. I want to know what forgettable actor was cast in this movie. I don't even remember who was the. Wait, yeah, was, I don't was Hoff not Night Rider? Two thousand eight. Wow! 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 Justin uh, Bruning. Don't know idea. Who that oh yeah, and they is. redid it, didn't they? they yeah. The, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 No, there's a bunch of fucking nobodies in this. Val Kilmer though. Uh, I voice? don't see him listed. Uh, okay. Bruce Davison. We'll let you know. All right. So. I don't know where, why I'm remembering that. <laughs> Could be all way wrong. Uh. The week before, we did our best and worst of the year episode. Jimbo Ice writes in to say, I like Thanksgiving and I love Talk to Me, but I think When Evil Lurks is my horror film of the year. That movie slaps so hard, it deserves a watch, if not an episode. I liked it. We all watched it. And we we were just, uh, yeah, I, it good. I, didn't think, I liked it, didn't love it. Yeah. yeah. I, think it was, I thought it was pretty solid. Yeah. Um, I re- <laughs> uh, the moment with the dog got me. Where I was just like, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. But difficult. I, yeah, but I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it. Yeah, there you go. Just, you know, yep, you know the, we don't got. I don't think we're gonna rave about it, but we liked it. Yeah, there you go. All right, well, that uh, sums up our listener uh, mailbag. Thank you all, Thank each you of you, much. for writing in. We appreciate you writing mm-hmm. in. Yes, thanks for listening. We'd be nothing without you. And now, we'll just be a podcast of people. That's right. And uh, <laughs> yep, we're just doing this for the love of doing it. So. Uh, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, which was Ricky O, the story of Ricky, starting with Sean. Uh, I had a good time watching Ricky tonight. I did not know what to expect from this movie. Uh, I mean, when it was announced last week, I decided not to look up anything or know anything about it. I was surprised. But when you, uh, as we prefaced it last week with something, uh, I think somebody said uh, uh, a story where when you punch people, they explode. Um, I was all down for it. And boy, this movie did not, um, um, what should we call it? Uh, uh, disappoint this, yeah that's <laughs> this movie did not disappoint in that regard uh people were punched they exploded um wow um uh, a fun movie an interesting movie a very gory movie um uh very surprising uh yeah um i mean i liked it uh, I'll, i mean some of the gore was just there, there's a lot lot of bloody gore in this movie so you know uh if you're, if you're one of those people who, who who can't quite handle that i don't think this movie will be for you but um i had a lot of fun with it tonight um again we were very reactive while we were watching it a lot of oohs and ahs um yeah uh yeah i was surprised this it's fun movie um it is uh it's an extreme movie um it's funny uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a good time. Uh, it harkens back to, I mean, the, the things we've talked about, a Shogun Assassin and whatnot. If you're a fan of those movies, I think you really like this one. Um, yeah, I'll recommend it. This was, this was a good time. I recommend it just so I can run into people randomly and be like, have you seen Ricky? Yeah. <laughs> do you know, the, do you know right. the story of Ricky? And then we can discuss it and how crazy it is. So yes, I will, uh, recommend it. Michaela. What did you think about Ricky? Oh, the story of Ricky. Yeah, I, I think I was probably a little hard on it in the episode, but I did enjoy it. I just so sometimes when you watch movies of a certain genre, you're like, I know it's going to hit these tropes. And you're like, oh, sure. Well, can we just like I've been here, done that. Like I, the flashbacks in these types of movies <laughs> always kill me because they don't usually add a ton. And it's I know you need the breaks from the gore. I'm fine without the breaks from it, especially if it's going to be a flashback of us flying right remote control fucking airplanes. Like, I don't, I don't need it. Um, but we still, didn't even know what the banner said. That no, we, we never got a translation oh, yeah. for I it. I so know what the banner because he flies in a little helicopter yeah. and there's a banner that's supposed to say something. I'm guessing cute or yeah. lovely, and we don't know what it says. Yeah, it. But like I said, this. Is, might be one of the goriest, goriest movies I've ever Ooh. seen. And like it uses it in ways I haven't seen before. And that's what I really like about it. It's like always like people being creative with how they're going to do something gory. And like I said, everything's bladed and sharp and gross. And like yeah. the razor blades in the mouth was yeah. really a lot. Um, the meat grinder was, but that went on so much longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> but I, I was like, wow, they're really going for it. And so yeah. I appreciate oh, that they, they are committed 110% to everything they do in this movie. So yeah, I mean, 
yeah, I, I haven't seen much like this, I feel like. So I feel like I got to recommend it just because it is it is a thing to behold. It is a spectacle for sure. Um, You know, it you have your dips in, in my opinion, in the momentum here and there, but like minor gripes, you know. Um, Yeah. Wow. Didn't expect him to turn into like a like a weird latex version monster of himself. Yeah, that, was, that came out of ooh. nowhere. Um, But I love I love Japanese and Chinese movies for taking these weird swings like this all the time. And like, maybe it's just weird to us because it's a cultural thing. Maybe it isn't weird to them to do things like that, but that's what I love about exploring movies from other places. You get exposed to some weird shit. So, you know, even if you don't like it, it's good for you. You know, it's good. Take your it's, medicine. Yeah, it's like your cinematic vegetables. You know, so eat your vegetables and educate yeah. yourself. Yeah, take it's your a, vitamins, brother. You know, um, if we don't open ourselves up to movies like this, we don't get beautiful things like Godzilla minus one. You know, coming to theaters everywhere. So be open to the experience. Yeah, support other countries. Yes. In movies. Yeah, you'll get something. You'll good get out some, of it some good some shit. Yeah. I mean, compared to what we're putting out, they can't be doing much worse, right? So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Colin, what did you think? Yeah, it's an easy recommend. I think I am. I am shocked that I have made it this far. I haven't seen it. This seems Same. like Same. you haven't yeah. seen. It. Yeah, yes. I, I mean, because I, I can't remember if I started watching it once or something. But like my memory wasn't jogged in watching it, and so I clearly didn't get very far. Maybe it was on a bad copy or so. Who knows? Maybe. But I'm sitting there going like, this seems like one of the foundational like building blocks of like '90s. Uh, you know movies especially the hong kong wave yeah that uh came over here um the only thing i mean it is a ridiculously gory and violent movie very um i did read something that said i think the lead actor or somebody who was in the movie one of the actors said um you know, because I guess the the comic is also like you know extremely hyper hyper violent, yeah, yeah. and so they're like, yeah, no, we're going to adapt it just the way that it is. And he was like, I don't know if you know that's a, a good idea or whatever. And then of course later he says that's the reason that people remember the movie. Yeah, that is exactly. the selling point. This is a hyper <laughs> hyper stylized comic. Uh, you know, as in funny. Uh, prison martial arts movie with just uh, buckets of blood all over the place. Yep. Uh, whoever mentioned Dead Alive, like now that you said that, I'm like, okay, Dead Alive might be like another movie that yeah. was just this over the top and gross. I mean, I said Reanimator earlier, or mm-hmm. I was Stuart Gordon. I was thinking Reanimator. I'm yeah. like, that's also a very, uh, you know, it has a similar mm-hmm. tone. Sure, but you know, not as red as this <clears throat> movie. Yeah, and Dead Alive is like more more comedic I yeah, think than this definitely. definitely um but it's definitely somewhere in the zone of these mm-hmm. extreme splatter movies yep um I know there are some people out there who you know don't have a very strong stomach you know yep. who go into right. these things th- and and this one I think you need to have a strong stomach. I would yes. actually put that warning on it like you need to have <laughs> yeah a oh strong yeah stomach. definitely because I've shown movies to people before who were horror fans who were still like there was a, a level that it was like too much. Uh, yeah, think, you will be going Jesus every mm-hmm. like yeah twenty minutes at least. I think if you're if you're listening to this show, you know probably you've you've seen enough stuff and uh, you can you can tolerate it. You have a tolerance for it, and then in that case, like you have to see this movie. This is a, <laughs> yeah a classic of splatter cinema. Yeah, uh, one of the best ones <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess I would definitely recommend that you check out. Um, the story Ricky O, mm-hmm. the story of Ricky, and it's a fucking movie. Like it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't. Like, no, yeah, no, it no, feels it's, big it's budget. A, yeah, yeah. It's a movie. Yeah, because I've seen other like Japanese movies. I'm trying to think of a Chinese movie, but like some Japanese movies I've seen, they don't seem to have like a very large budget. They're all you know shot in people's homes and yeah, stuff like that, and, right? And everything feels very muted, but they're not going for like this kind of. Well, even yeah, I've seen some Takashi Miike movies. Yeah. Oh, that was also he came out of this. Yeah. Yes. Or no, no, he was a later. Mm-hmm. Right. He was yeah, making was stuff then, but mm-hmm. um, what was that one about the assassin? Is the name of it? I should Ichi the killer. Ichi the killer well, was yeah. like an extreme. Yeah. But that's like. That was even yeah. more, it was more gross than this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though this is. I like that movie less. Yeah. 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 It was like, ew. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, you should watch it. And I think all three of us have uh, signed off on it. So yep. that means contractually you're obligated to see it. And I'm sorry that you got to go get a free trial to the, <laughs> the Criterion, Criterion Channel. Yeah. Watch again, the cat movies while you're there. But again, there. Cat yeah. Channel. Yeah. Worth it. Yeah. All right. So next week we're watching another movie that's chosen by you. you number one. The most voted for movie. I, oh, I, can't, I don't even. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. Right. Very worried. You ready? Mm-hmm. It's the 1978 remake of Invasion of the Bodies. Okay. Oh. All right. 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 They did us a favor. Okay. This is a good movie. This is a good movie. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I think I only recently upsetting, watched this like but... five years ago. Uh, okay. I don't think I really Yeah. Seen it Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. We got to go into good. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, movies, past and present, yep. the whole Ooh, thing. Yep. All right, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, yeah. This one I look forward to doing some research on and maybe watching a newer one. It's funny because I've had the newer one, uh, the the Invasion with Nicole yeah. Kidman. I've had that on my list for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's another one. What came Body after Snatchers, this one? Body Snatchers, the Abel Ferrara one. I think like, that's people the one like I, that in Hindsight. Th- well, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get it. Next that's yeah. one of the later ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got some memories of that. All right, this would be a good one. All right. Good, good. Good job, people. Good choice, yeah. Well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Free Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.